would have an influence not only on him, but on all whom he met. Not for a day, a month, or a year, but for time and for eternity. Rose did most of the child rearing. Joe, on his way to his first million, was often absent. She took the task earnestly in those pre-Dr. Spock days, insisting, like a Victorian governess, that they make improving conversation at meals. Money was the only forbidden subject. Of course, as they grew older, then we would get into more uh, complicated, and they were supposed to read the papers then and know what was going on. And then if there were big important events, sometimes I would put them on a bulletin board downstairs. Like uh, 4th of July, I had a copy of the Declaration of Independence with all the signatures, and the, uh, some of them were written in big letters, like John Hancock, and some of them were written smaller. You know, little, it's a silly thing, uh, not silly thing, but uh, very uh, natural things. How and, did you discipline your children? Well, I spanked them with the ruler, and then I spanked them with the coat hanger as they grew old, <laughs> because there was always a closet near, and there was always a coat hanger in the closet. And, and uh, Did Jack Kennedy get spanked? I couldn't be bothered, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> with nine children and all their friends in and making a lot of noise when you were telephoning or <laughs> uh, teasing one another or something. And I'd just give them a couple of <laughs> yes. And, uh, and then I, uh, I told the story in the book of going out west to take care of my grandchildren. And when they heard I was coming, they knew about the coat hangers. So they threw all the coat hangers down the laundry chute. <laughs> so I couldn't find them when I went out. So um, You were quite strict with them, weren't you? For instance, you say that if Jack was late for lunch, which he often was, yeah. then he didn't get a first course. No. But what could you do if he was late every day? It was deliberate. I mean, he'd just come in. So, but he'd go in the kitchen and get, get the rest. And as I said, he was so thin, somebody read that and said it was very poor discipline, which it was. But uh, he was so thin all the time that I couldn't really adhere to the original. How did you encourage them to be thrifty when there was a lot of money in the family and really not great need to economize? Well, I don't, I don't know. They, uh, do you make them save from their allowances? Or? Well, they saved a little bit, but it wasn't uh, nothing very serious. They just, as I said, in New England, nobody was spending a lot of money. Nobody, they had no, uh, their needs were pretty well fulfilled. We had movies in our own house, you see. That was a wonderful thing, I think. Of course, Mr. Kennedy was in the moving picture business, and uh, he would have all these new movies every weekend, and that was an incentive for them to stay at home. Joe Kennedy's talent for making money took him into the movie business just as the talkies were starting. Shrewder and cooler than the older movie tycoons, he shunned high-budget risks for low-budget certainties with obvious box office attractions. In only two and a half years, Joe Kennedy made an estimated five million dollars in the movies, then bowed out. He then made millions more by foreseeing and exploiting the Wall Street crash of 1929. When he could spend time with the family, he demanded excellence from his children. In that stock, he wanted growth and performance. You say you would rather be the mother of a great man than to be a great novelist or to yeah. painted a great picture. You think that producing a great man <laughs> and bringing him up is, is as creative as yeah. uh, an yes, endeavor, I as do. painting a picture? I do. Or... I do. I think it's, uh, I think it takes a lot of brains. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of thought. It takes a lot of cooperation. Yes, I do. And when your third son got elected to the Senate, when Teddy became a senator, yeah. you say in the book, I said to myself, I must be doing something right. <laughs> right, yes. Joe Kennedy never did the obvious. Over Rose's objections, the boys went to Protestant, not Catholic schools. And he astonished other capitalists of the day by giving his sons a touch of socialism. I thought...